over here at Creation Station and today we are going to be doing our sore muscle bath bomb demonstration for those of you that have been requesting me to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the basic recipe that I already have up on the channel, on my second channel, Soap Chef 2, and um, we're going to build on that because that recipe was bare bones, basic, for people who have never even made a bath bomb before and they don't know where to start. So that was bare bones basic. There's no butters in there. There's no color. Um, there was no um, foaming bubblers in the way of powder or some people put cocoa bee into the bath bombs. I do not. Um, so there's none of that kind of stuff. And we're just going to build on that first original basic recipe. Um, and we're going to include a milk powder because that's going to make your water feel really luxurious and really skin soothing. We're going to sub the oil out for a butter and we're going to add color. So I'm gonna give you guys the recipe again from that original video that I placed up on uh, this particular channel, but I'm also going to have a info card up above so you guys can just click on that and go right to that video. Um, start there, but if you're you know, building up in your bath bomb venture and you wanna keep increasing your knowledge and branch out and try different things and get a little bit more oomph, okay, we're, we're building up to that, right? So here's the recipe. I'll state it first and then I'll just show you guys, okay? So in this recipe, again, we are going to be building on that first recipe that we put up on our channel. Now we've had to change the percentages on our baking soda because we are decreasing our fragrance amount because, and I'll get to that momentarily, but we're decreasing that amount, um, but we're also adding an extra ingredient that was not present in that original formula, and that is our milk powder. So we're going to add an ingredient, so we have to take some away from the baking soda. We're also going to be decreasing our scent amount from that original one, and so we're gonna go ahead and, and add that extra onto the baking soda. So it kind of actually levels itself out. Sorry if that sounds confusing, you guys, but it's not just a matter of, oh, hey, I have 100% in my formula, but now I wanna add some stuff. So let's add like 1% of butters and let's add another half ounce of a fragrance. So that's one and a half ounces more that you're adding. Well, now you're no longer at 100%, right? So that's why we have to take away from something if we're going to be adding other ingredients. So in this particular recipe, we're gonna have baking soda at 59.75%, cornstarch 6%. We're going to substitute our avocado oil for cocoa butter. That percentage is staying the same, 1%. Polysorbate, 0.5%. Our scent, which was 1.5% on that original recipe, we are now going down to 1.25%, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Our binder is going to be 1%, and our citric acid is going to be 30%. Okay, so for today, we are doing our sore muscle bath bomb, and I have my own blend that I created um, for that sore muscle blend, and that includes um, rosemary, peppermint, sweet orange, and eucalyptus. Now, all fragrance oils, all essential oils are not alike, okay? So you need to go up to EO Calc and you need to put in your batch weight, however big of a batch you're going to be making. So for today, we're doing a 16 ounce batch. So you have to plug that in. You have to plug in each one of the essential oils that you are going to be using and the percentage of that essential oil in your formula. I have four different essential oils, so each one is equal. I have 25% of each one of those. Plug that into EOCalc. My batch is 16 ounces. Plug that into EOCalc. It will do all your calculations for you. I choose um, for lips. The product that I'm making is for lips because that's the most sensitive part of our body unless you're a female. And then we have other areas that are as sensitive, if not more sensitive. Um, so that's why we choose for lips because the last thing we want to do is put like a whole bunch of essential oils that could burn our very sensitive parts when we're sitting in the bathtub. We don't want to do that. 
So once I plugged all that kind of stuff in and got my ounces, I'm going to choose the strong, which is on the very far right, the strong amount. And as long as all of your essential oils and your amounts after you've calculated it are in the green, you're good to go. If any one of those is in the red, you need to decrease that particular essential oil. I'm sorry if this sounds confusing, you guys. Once you start playing around with EO Calc, you will know what I'm talking about, but it's really important that we pay attention, especially to products that we're gonna be soaking in, that we use the correct percentages so we are not harming anybody, okay? So, all of that being said, we have 1.25% now on our scent blend instead of 1.5, okay? So that is our recipe for today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other things that we're going to be using. Like I said, we're gonna be adding a milk powder. So again, original recipe on the channel, bare bone basic, nothing. But it's a good recipe, it works, it fizzes out in about three minutes, which for most people is fine. Most people only wanna sit in the bathtub a maximum of like 10 minutes, okay? So three minutes for it to completely fizz out, it's perfectly fine. And that's a really good recipe, really hard recipe too. But the different types of milk powders that you can use, so I just have regular milk powder, just your regular whole milk powder. You can also use buttermilk powder, which is going to give you a little bit of a yellow hue to your bath bomb. Be aware of that, but that's a fantastic ingredient. If you guys look back on the channel, when I did the um, demonstration of chunk of dust molds, she uses buttermilk powder. Heather does. She uses buttermilk powder in her recipe. And it's a great recipe. If for whatever reason I ever lost all of my information and I just couldn't remember my own formula, I would use Heather's recipe. Okay. And then you can also use heavy cream powder, which is what I use in my regular recipe that I sell my bath bombs. I use heavy cream. We're going to get to that way later on. For today's purposes, I'm just going to be using plain whole milk powder. You guys can find that in any grocery store, okay? Now, in the middle of each one of my bath bombs, I put some salt in there in the form of Epsom and Dead Sea Salt, okay? I get my stuff from Saltworks, really, really great company. Um, so there's a couple of different textures that you can go for, right? So today, I'm going to be using fine Dead Sea Salt combined with Epsom salt. You could also use coarse dead sea salt if you'd like, but you can see like how big and chunky this is. Personally, I don't want my rear end to be sitting down on this. Once the bath bomb starts dissolving, you're going to have these big chunks until they start dissolving. I really don't want to sit on that, okay? I have this for other purposes, other things that, that I use the course for, but I just wanted to give you guys a look to see the different types, okay? So we're gonna be using, again, whole milk powder, fine dead sea salt, Epsom salt. So we're gonna get this right on out of the way. All right, the other thing I wanna talk about before we start going is color, okay? So we're going to be doing blue colorant today. And I'm gonna show you the different colors that we have to choose from, okay? In this big, huge bucket is something you never wanna use <laughs> in bath products. This color or any other color, if it's an oxide. Oxides will make your bomb stinky. The sulfur that is produced from that is no joke, you guys. It smells like rotten eggs. It's disgusting. So don't ever use oxides to, to make bath products, never. Just wanted to show you that that, you know, that's a really nice vibrant color. Let's just take the lid off of that too. You can see the different colors here. So this is an oxide. That's a lake. That's a dye. You can see the difference in all the different colors, okay? We're not going to be using that oxide. That's gone. Here we have lake and we have dye. They are both blue number one. In all of my bath bomb products, you will see me using lakes, not dyes. The reason for that is lakes uh, withstand color way longer than a dye does. A dye, which is water soluble, will fade over time way quicker than a lake does. 
And because we do a whole bunch of outside outdoor events all summer long, all the way up until I think November is, no, the end of October is our last outdoor event, but we start in May and go all the way through the end of October with outdoor events. And I can tell you from personal experience, I've been doing this for 21 years, um, your dyes are gonna fade way quicker than your lakes are going to. Another bonus about using lakes is you don't have to bloom them, okay? You could put those directly right into your dry powders when you're making your bath bombs, no blooming required. However, when you're using a lake, you have to use a polysorbate, okay? Because that color is just gonna get stuck all around the outside of your tub, no matter what you do. So you have to use a polysorbate when you're using a lake. And this is a dye, this is blue number one, teeny, 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 tiny little mount. And this stains really bad. So way, way less is way, way more with dyes. Again, this is water soluble. So it is great for the bathtub. You do not need polysorbate if you are going to be using this to color your bath bombs. Little goes a really long way. You do have to bloom this, however. Okay, so we'll get into all of that a whole nother time. This is not the day for, for blooming and, and all that kind of stuff and how you do all that. I just wanted to show you guys the different options that you have for colorants and what to stay away from, okay? All right, let's get going, shall we? Enough of this. We're going to be using Lake today because that's what I use to color my bath bombs. One of the other things I wanted to say to you guys too is... Everything that I'm telling you on my channels, both of my channels, it's for information and educational purposes only. And this is my personal experience, okay? Every single maker is going to have their own personal experience. And just because somebody sounds extremely authoritative in the way that they are presenting their information, doesn't necessarily mean that that is factual and true information that they are giving you. So please, you guys, do your own research, okay? Do your own research and development and tweaking so that you can formulate your own products on your own without any assistance from anybody else. Because let's face it, it's just their opinion. Everything I'm telling you today is my opinion based on my own personal experience. So just keep that in mind. If you are watching anybody, listening to anybody, reading anything, they sound really, really authoritative, but they also sound like it's my way or the highway. If you don't do it this way, it won't work for you. Stop watching them. <laughs> like immediately, stop watching them. Stop reading it. Stop listening to it. That's completely false information. Nobody's way is the exact perfect way and the only way to do things. What I am telling you guys is these are my suggestions for you based on 21 years of my own personal experience. And if I ever come off sounding like you have to do it this way or it will not work for you, stop watching me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's really been under my craw lately where people are like, okay, if you only do it this way, then it's not going to work for you. You have to do it this way. And oh my goodness, I'm telling you, it's been getting to me. Enough of that. Let's get going because that's what you guys came here for. I already have everything pre-measured out. We're just going to get rolling really, really quick here today. So I don't have my mask on today because we are not adding any powdered surfactants, but I am still going to be careful of, I have a little piece of something in there. I am going to be careful about um, putting my powders into my bowl. I'm going to do it as low into my bowl as possible to try to eliminate as much as I can any of that wafting that goes on, okay? So this is our baking soda. And so again, 59.75% baking soda. And this is a 16 ounce batch. So this is two, and I'm working in grams today because that is the most precise measurement. I never ever work in grams, but for the purposes of these videos for the beginning level, I'm working in grams because it's way more precise. All right, there's our baking soda. Next, we're gonna be adding 6% of cornstarch, which is 27.2 grams. Alrighty then. That's it for our dry ingredients. And the next thing we're going to put in is going to be our cocoa butter. 
and that is at 1%, so this is 4.5 grams. Just give me a second. It's only gonna take like, oh, I don't even know, maybe five seconds to melt this down. Hold, please. Okay, so now we've got our cornstarch in there, we've got our baking soda, and that's it for our dry ingredients. So the next thing we're gonna do is put in our liquid ingredients. I've already mixed everything all together here. So we've got our polysorbate at 0.5%, which is 2.26 grams. We have our scent, which again, we decreased the scent to 1.25%, which is on the strong end, because that's what I want for this sore muscle bomb. And so for the 1.25%, we are at uh, 5.6 grams total on that. And then I've got my binder, and I use witch hazel and rubbing alcohol as my binder at 1%, which is 4.5 grams. So we're gonna get that right into the pool with our dry. Oh, you know what I forgot to add you guys? The milk powder, because it's sitting over here. We'll do that in just a second. It doesn't matter if I put it in right now, because I haven't mixed anything yet. Even if I did mix anything, it's still fine. All right, our milk powder, which is not part of our original recipe that we already have here, remember, so we're going to be adding this. And the milk powder is going to be at 0.5%, which is 2.26 grams, right into the pool. Okay, now we're ready to go. So we're gonna grab a whisk and just start mixing this and then we're gonna get in here with our hands. All right, that's good enough. Now we're going to put in our color. You can do that before you add your liquids. That's perfectly fine. That's usually how I do it, if I'm being honest. Now again, less is more when you're working with blue number one. Whether it's a lake or a dye, less is more. It's really, really potent. So I'm basically gonna be using a pinch of blue one lake. Then I will take a look and I will see if that's good enough, if the color suits my liking. When I make uh, my regular batches of this with my own formula, I use half a teaspoon. I make a 72 ounce batch of bath bombs, and then I use a half a teaspoon. And it gives me exactly the color that I want. Now, this is too light for me. Well, actually, let's keep going. Because it does get darker. The more you handle your mix, and start working with it, the darker it becomes. So let's get in here with our hands and we'll see. This, this right now is like a light baby blue, as you guys can see. It's like a, a nice powder blue. I want it just a little bit darker than this. This is just a little bit too light for my liking. And again, we're going to be adding our citric acid last. So we're adding another white ingredient, which is going to lessen the color just a little bit, not a lot but a little bit it will. All right, so yeah, so that's not exactly as dark as I would like it to be. I'm not going to put in a whole nother pinch because then that's gonna to be too much for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a smidge, a pinch and a smidge. There you go. Let's put that in there. That should be fine. All right, let's get in here now. The thing with blue number one, you guys, and you'll find out when you start experimenting, it stains, it stains bad. Just handling the jar of blue number one dye without gloves on, just taking the jar off of the shelf, stains my hands. All right, this is good enough for me. It's not too dark, it's not too light, it's pretty much spot on. Last thing we're gonna do is add our citric acid. You guys already know why we do that because we don't want anything activating beforehand. We're not gonna mix everything first, then add our liquid. It's gonna go ahead and activate, start fizzing, releasing all that CO2. Remember the video that we did in the beginning, the original video when I did the um, demonstrations of baking soda by itself with water, uh, citric acid by itself with water, nothing happens. 
put those two ingredients together and then add the water and it starts fizzing all over the place, right? It starts releasing all of that CO2. So into the pool we go with our citric acid, which is at 30%, 136 grams. Take both hands and try to like rub things together to try to get that color to really pop. And this is a good time to really start feeling your mix. Is it too wet? Is it too dry? Do I need more binder? We're gonna do that test anyhow in just one second. Let's grab some squeeze. Does it hold together? Yep, drop it kind of falling apart a little bit. That's okay. We're going to go over here. We're going to grab our handy dandy little bottle of 70% rubbing alcohol. So it's got 30% water in it. Just give it a couple little squirts there. give it a go anyways. I might have to add a little bit more, but we're going to give it a go. Okay, I forgot to add the cocoa butter. Very important. Here's your cocoa butter. We're replacing our avocado oil with cocoa butter. Don't forget that part. Mm, give it a little mix. Get in there with your hands, mix this up a little bit better. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Pretty good. It's holding together pretty well. If I need to give a few spritzes of that um, alcohol, I will. Okay, now that everything is mixed pretty good, um, in our first video, we worked with round sphere molds. We worked with aluminum, plastic, and stainless steel. Today, we're gonna to be working with a 3D printed round sphere mold to make our sore muscle bath bombs. But before we get into that, I thought it would be fun to um, try a couple of other 3D bath bomb molds. Since Easter is coming up. So, we've got a couple chicks in the eggs. Aren't these cute as hell? This one I purchased from my friend Lisa, who owns Mirage Molds up in Canada, and this is one of our 3D bath bomb molds. So they're both chicks in the egg. I thought it would be kind of fun to just do those really quick, and then we'll move on to the um, sore muscle. It's the same um, formula, obviously. All right, let's start with the one from Lisa. I've never used this before. So it consists of an outer shell, and hers has a lip on the bottom to keep your plate in place, okay? So stick your plate down inside of your shell, and as you can see, that stays in place for you. We're going to lightly sprinkle a little bit on the bottom and give some pushes so that we ensure that those designs come out. I'm not gonna be putting any Epsom salt in here. I'm gonna save that for the actual round bath bombs. If you wanted to go ahead and put your embed powder in here, I always say powder. I don't use um, embeds because of Lush and their patents and trademarks and all of that. Okay, so our mold is filled up. Give it a little shake to even it out. Take our top plate, stick it on the top. Wait, did I have this on the right way? Hold, please. Okay, I had to turn it over. I had it on wrong. Okay. Uh-oh. Get in there. There we go. All right, and now we're just going to give some pushes. All right, good enough. I always get rid of all of my excess. And now we can do some taps around the outside shell. Give some uh, taps on the top plate. Turn it over and do the same thing on the bottom plate. 
All right, now I'm gonna take my fingers on the bottom and I'm gonna push up on that plate while I'm holding on to the top part of the outer shell. Fingers on the bottom, thumbs on the top part of the outer shell, and I'm gonna push up. Oop, that plate just came flying right off there, which is fine. Okay, this is a little bit delicate. Hold, please. All right, take your flip plate, stick it on the top, turn it over. You can use cardboard if you'd like. I just use flip plates because we make them. All right, take that bottom plate off gently because that's where your designs are, right? Oh, Lord, how cute. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? Look at that. That's cute. All right, well, as cute as you are, sweetheart, you got to go back in the pool because uh, time is ticking and I have things to do. <laughs> I just thought you guys would like to see that since uh, Easter is coming. All right, so that is from Mirage Molds, like I said. We're just going to crush that up again and keep on going here. Okay, next we're going to just really quick do mine, which is the chick in the egg. Again, sprinkle a little bit. Press, press, press. We want those designs to come out on the bottom. All right, fill that up, shake. Fill it up, shake. Now with mine, I have a little bit of more of a cup that needs to be filled in. So we're gonna build this up a little bit more. Whereas Lisa's was completely flat on the top, mine has got a little bit more of a cup that needs to be filled in. All right, so we're gonna take our cup then, stick it on the top, and give some pushes. You don't have to go crazy. Okay. All right, give some taps around the outside. Taps on the top. Turn it over, taps on the bottom. Now that's where your design is, remember. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that over again. We're gonna push up. We're gonna remove that um, cup that does not have the design. If there's any resistance, you guys, just keep tapping. Turn it over and do the same thing. Let's see if he'll come up and off of here now. All right, let's get our foot plate, or you can use your cardboard, turn it over, and go straight up and off. And there's our little baby chick. Ain't he cute? Cutesy. Cutesy. All right, that's enough of that. We gotta get rolling. All right, that's that. I just thought you guys might like to see um, a couple of little chicks that are available for your purchase on my website as well as Mirage Molds. All right, let's get going here though with this um, sore muscle using our Epsom salt and our fine dead sea salt. Okay, again, we're gonna be uh, transitioning now into 3D bath bomb molds. Still working with a round sphere between this and the donut and possibly the waffle, but that's a little bit more advanced. Um, but the round sphere and the donut are by far the easiest to start to work with when you're starting to work with 3D bath bomb molds. Again, we have an outer shell, we have two cups. Put your outer shell down, place one cup down in the middle, and we're gonna start filling. I fill to roughly about three quarters of the way, give it a little bit of a shake. Now I'm going to make a divot right down in the middle. The reason why I do that, instead of just piling on the sea salt and the Epsom salt, salts attract water, it's a fact. So if you are using dead sea salt and or Epsom salt in your bath bomb mixture, um, be aware that it could draw moisture into your bath bomb, making it really soft and mushy and that's no, no bueno, right? So that's why I make the divot and I kind of hide my salts, right? And I usually put an equal amount of both. And I have just one of these small little um, teaspoons. 
It's like an iced teaspoon, you know, like one of those really long iced teaspoons. Some people think that this is like a Sunday spoon, the long spoons. So I, about halfway, okay, with my dead sea salt, put that in the middle. Take the same amount with my Epsom salt, put that in the middle. Does that look like enough? Not really. So I'm going to put a little bit more, just a little bit more. Okay. So now that we have that in, I'm gonna take my fingers and kind of try to bury it a little bit before I start adding the rest of my mix. I don't want any of this to be exposed on the outer walls of my bath bomb because it is going to draw moisture. In my experience, it's going to draw moisture in there. We don't want that. Okay. Now we're gonna keep continue filling. Shake, fill and shake, fill and shake. We're gonna build up this top just a little bit because we've got another cup that needs to be filled, right? So unlike the stainless steel and the aluminum and the plastic where you're gonna fill each half individually and then sprinkle a little bit on the top and put them together, we're gonna to do everything inside of this shell. Okay, so you can see where I've built that up because we have this whole cup here that we need to fill up, right? straight up and down, push it down, do your presses. You will see a lot of creators doing it in their hands, just going like this. That's too hard on my wrists personally, but if that's more comfortable for you, go for it. I do it this way because it's easier on my wrists to do it this way and I always brace my wrist when I push. I brace that wrist rather than, you know, this is just awkward for me to be going like this is for me is awkward for you. You may like it better. All right, let's get our spoon and do some taps. Tap on the top. Turn it over, tap on the bottom. Fingers on the bottom, thumb on the top of the outer shell. We're gonna push up. Again, you're gonna see a lot of other creators do it a different way. You're gonna see them putting it down like that and just pushing up. Sometimes you'll see them going up and down with their cylinder to try to loosen any bath bomb mix that got in between their cups and their cylinder. Fine. Whatever you guys feel is the best for you, whatever works the best for you and is the most comfortable for you. No one person on the face of the planet has all of the answers and they should never be saying to you, this is the only way you should do it. If you don't do it this way, you're gonna fail. Don't listen to people like that. All right, give it a little bit of push if you wanna get rid of that Saturn ring. If you don't, leave it alone. I usually take my skewer then and just kinda brush that off. A lot of people like a really big Saturn ring, I do not. All right, we're gonna give some more taps on the top before we unmold. Turn it over, same thing. All right, straight up and off with that top cup. Now, I'm gonna put it right in my hand, turn that whole thing over, and then I'm gonna pull that bottom cup right up and off. And there you go. There's a beautiful round bath bomb made with our 3D bath bomb mold. And that is a sore muscle bath bomb. We're just gonna put that right over there to dry. We're gonna do one more, and that's gonna be it for today. All right, let's do it again. Shell, cup. Make your divot. Don't go all the way down to the bottom. You know what I mean? Like if you can feel the bottom of your mold, you've gone too far. Don't do that. That's why I fill it up to about three quarters of the way to try to help myself remember. Don't go all the way down to the bottom. All right, here we go again. We're gonna get some fine dead sea salt. And we're gonna get some Epsom salt. All right, cover it over just a little bit if you can. Again, just to try to minimize the exposure on the outer walls so that none of that salt, that salt is going to be like right on the edges there and start drawing in moisture. What a mess, let me tell you. 
All right, we've built up that top a little bit. We're gonna take our top cup now, turn it over, place it on the top, and give our pushes. And I probably overfilled this one. I can, I can already kind of feel by the way that this is acting that I've overfilled it a little bit. So I'm gonna have a bigger Saturn ring than I am usually used to having. Sometimes you can take it straight off, sometimes you can't. All right, and there we go again. Like I said, like this is a bigger Saturn ring than the previous one that we just made. All right, you guys, I'm gonna finish that off to the side. So here we go. Here are our sore muscle bath bombs using our basic recipe that we started with on this channel. And we've just added to that. We built upon that by adding a milk powder, a butter, which substituted our oil and color. All right. And again, be careful when you're using essential oils in um, products that you're going to be soaking in. Please go up to EO Calc. Learn how to use EO Calc so that you are formulating safely for your clients. Um, also, keep in mind the color situation as far as dyes versus lakes. Never use oxides for your bath bombs. And it's a personal preference. Dyes or lakes. A lot of people love dye. I do not. I do a lot of outside events. I do not like dyes in my bath bombs and I don't like to bloom. So it's just easier for me to do the lakes. All right, you guys, that's going to do it today. Stay tuned for more videos just like this. We're going to be coming out with our bubble frosting uh, recipe, which has been, oh God, it's been on our burner to try to get a video done for that for at least six months. It's been highly requested. So stay tuned and uh, be ready for that. If you like this video and you thought that this was useful and helpful, please give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, share, do all of the things. Hit that notification bell so the next time we upload a video just like this, you'll be notified. Till we meet again.